Hi, everyone. Bill and I are going to be talking about Azure Arcas. So come check out the next IoT Show episode. Welcome to IoT Show. Today we're going to be focusing on Azure Artos and how to get started and what it is. So we have Bill here online with me right now. Uh, Bill, do you want to give an overview on what you do at Microsoft? Sure. My name is Bill Lamy. I am a uh, principal program manager for Azure Artos. Prior to um, uh, Microsoft, I came over from the Express Logic acquisition which was a little bit over a year ago, and, and I'm uh, one of the founders of Express Logic and the author of ThreadX. Prior to that, I was uh, another co-founder of another company called Accelerated Technology and another Artos called Nucleus. So uh, all in total, it's been about 30 years of, uh, of work in this industry, which every time I say that, it makes me feel older. Oh, uh, it's great that we have you now part of the Microsoft family. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Pamela Cortez. I'm on the Azure IoT team. I focus on developer communities and making technical content. So I'm excited that you're all here to join us. Uh, so why don't we get started? How about we just focus on what exactly is RTOS before we jump in? That's a great question, Pamela, and a great place to start, especially for a general audience. Uh, RTOS stands for Real-Time Operating System. And RTOS is analogous to a general purpose operating system like Windows or Linux, things that we're all kind of familiar with, uh, at least in the sense that um, you know those operating systems do multitasking and provide those kind of facilities, just like an RTOS does. However, that's kind of where the similarity ends. Uh, the most important characteristic of an RTOS is generally size. RTOS size is measured in k-bytes or kilobytes, while a general purpose operating system is measured more in megabytes or even in gigabytes. Uh, because of its size, an RTOS can be used in the smallest of battery powered devices, anything from like uh, fitness wearables um, to uh, even medical implants. RTOS performance is another important characteristic of an RTOS. The, um, uh, you know, when you when you look at a real-time operating system, the real-time part is because of uh, actually responding to real-time events in a determined amount of time. And an RTOS can do that where a general purpose operating system would have a little bit of struggle. So that's great. So it sounds like it's great for constrained devices, smaller devices. I love that reference of wearable devices. Um, so how many devices right now are, uh, do you think that's using RTOS? Well, in ThreadX, uh, we did a, a market research uh, survey in 2017, and there were 6.2 billion devices that were based on ThreadX at that point in time. And so the number is much greater. I think it grows by 500 million or so per year. So at, at least 6.2 billion yeah. is the answer. Yeah, I think I heard a, a crazy number that there is 1 million uh, IoT devices that are coming online every hour, which is just crazy, crazy to think about. Uh, so we, you touched on uh, what is RTOS. So what is Azure RTOS? So Azure RTOS represents the enhanced collection of embedded products from the Express Logic acquisition. Uh, and that includes ThreadX, which we just mentioned has the 6.2 billion deployments. In addition to ThreadX, uh, Azure RTOS also includes FileX, which is a fat file system, uh, GUIX, which is a uh, 2D graphics runtime engine, uh, and then NetX uh, and NetX Duo, which are TCP IP stacks that include the uh, security for cloud and also the uh, cloud protocols. And then finally, USBX, which is a, a USB host and device uh, set of software protocols. And you hinted on this, or just kind of mentioned about it, uh, that Microsoft acquired uh, Express Logic, and I believe that was over a year ago. Yeah, two thousand uh, uh, last year, two thousand nineteen, and April fifteenth. So we're just over our one year anniversary. So you mentioned some of the features of Azure Artos. Could you deep dive a little bit more about what it makes it so special? Sure. The uh, the big things with Azure Artos, uh, and this kind of was true even before acquisition, is really being best of class in terms of size and speed. Um, it's also um, Azure Artos, and just like the previous products, we're also best of class in terms of functional safety and also security, at least in the terms of the uh, Artos domain. 
to drill down a little bit further, um, the size of Azure Artest scales all the way down to 2K bytes. So we can really fit in almost the tiniest devices. Uh, and if you want to do a minimal cloud connection, we can do that in 50K bytes. And I don't think there's any other solution um, you know, out there that can do something like that. Uh, on the That's performance amazing. side, yeah, no, it is. It's 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 remarkable, uh, and and you can get things that uh, you know can live for you know a year on battery life that can actually do cloud connections with that kind of footprint and memory consumption. Um, on the performance side, uh, you know we boast things like uh, sub microsecond context switching and sub microsecond API calls, uh, and that also translates to battery uh, power consumption as well because every cycle you spend is a is a consumption of energy on on the battery. So, um, so those are the those are the high level pieces. Uh, on the security front, uh, Azure RTOS has a bunch of security components like IPsec, TLS, DTLS, and those are all necessary for cloud connection. We also take a lot of those pieces and we go through um, EAL four plus common criteria certification, as well as FIPS one hundred and forty two certification for the crypto library. On uh, back to functional safety a little bit, I forgot about. Um, you know, some of the functional safety things that we do. We take all the core products, and that's ThreadX, FileX, GUIX, NetX Duo, and USBX through uh, basically uh, IEC 61508 um, functional safety certification. Uh, and that also transcends to uh, medical certification and also automotive. And we do the, the highest level in each of those, SIL-4, ASIL-D, medical class C. That's great. So this is a really uh, great way to make sure there's uh, secure devices. Um, on that mention of security, will there be compatibility or support for Azure Security Center with Azure RTOS? Yes, that's something that we will announce uh, at GA, uh, which is coming up uh, Microsoft build timeframe May 19th, I believe. So that'll be part of the announcement there. So we'll have uh, Azure RTOS playing nicely with Azure Security Center so customers can leverage that technology as well. So uh, for folks who are joining in, how do you get started? Like, how do you get your hands on this? Uh, as of um, you know May 19th, this is a forward-looking thing at the time we're doing this uh, recording, uh, all of Azure RTOS source code, documentation, um, the, whole, the whole ball of wax will be on GitHub available for free access. Uh, and that'll give you the, the license on GitHub will allow free download, uh, exploration, development. Um, for production use, uh, that'll require another uh, a license, uh, either from Microsoft or one of the participating semiconductor companies that have actually pre-purchased the licenses for their customers. And what about all of those um, existing customers that used to work with ThreadX? What's going to be the main change, or is there going to be any changes uh, now that it's all part of the Azure RTOS suite? It's going to be mostly changes in links and email addresses. You know, that, that's going to be, you know, most of it. So pretty easy, really. Uh, the same, you know, we'll be supporting all of our current customers. Uh, and the cool thing is the core of Azure RTOS is the same core that we had with ExpressLogic, uh, enhanced and, and hardened, you know, by using, you know, or leveraging the Microsoft development processes uh, and also resources for, you know, security testing and things like that. But the core is still the same. So all the API calls and, and the base functionality will be the same for the existing customers. So, you know, even if we went way back to 1997 when ExpressLogic was first introduced, applications written in 1997 will also run just fine on Azure RTOS today. That's what I love about it. It's the fact that folks, even back in 1997, who's been working with it, they can still ensure that everything's going to still be working. And I can imagine, especially with IoT devices that, you know, are manufacturing floor or even, you know, wearables, like making sure you have long-term support for that is so important. You got to make sure those devices uh, are still working even after a year. Yeah, all through the uh, the history of Express Logic and even through Microsoft now, we have a, you know, don't break an existing API policy. So, um, and, and it'll serve our customers well going forward as it has in the past. Well, thank you so much, Bill, for joining and talking about Azure RTOS. I'm excited now that it's GA and that we can talk about it. Uh, and so if people want to learn more, where do they go? That's a great thing to, to mention, Pamela. 
The, uh, the best way is to go on to azure.com slash RTOS. And after you type that in in your browser, you should see a page that looks like this. And uh, then you can kind of, you know, get, you know, probably even a better description than what I gave earlier in the interview. But you can go through here and find out what an RTOS is, um, some, of the, uh, some of the features or value propositions that it has. Um, and then this is an interesting area. You can drill down on each of the components of Azure RTOS. Clicking on this will bring you to each one of those component pages. And then there's some advanced technology. I didn't mention this in the interview earlier, but preemption threshold is something unique to Azure RTOS that isn't available in other RTOSs, as well as event chaining. Um, those are really technical, so you know probably you know something for um, you know you to drill down on if uh, if you so desire. And then uh, some information about security and some of our hardware partners. Um, these are the initial partners that are licensing or or pre-licensing production licenses for Azure RTOS customers. So for, for customers using these parts, uh, they'll effectively be a free license to use Azure RTOS with full source code. And then finally, uh, you know, maybe even most important user guides, um, all the product user guides are uh, available with a click on this link uh, and then they download immediately to your, uh, to your environment. And white papers and that's about it. Well, thank you so much, Bill, for giving us an overview on what Azure Artos is and how to get started. So thank you, everyone, for viewing, and uh, we're excited for you guys to get started. Bye.